in Sports of Field magazine. The Shooting Sports, America. Brought to you by Ruger. Thompson Center. And Sports of Field magazine. Hi, I'm Rich Gresham, shooting editor for Sports of Field magazine. Here in West Yellowstone, Montana, training site for the U.S. Olympic biathlon team. This combination of cross-country skiing and shooting is considered to be among the most grueling and demanding of all the Winter Olympic events. Shooting is actually a big part of the Olympics. And we'll also be taking a look at all the shooting events in the Summer Olympic Games. You know, these days, there are literally dozens and dozens of events in the Olympics. And even some of the most popular in terms of participating nations and spectators aren't often in the spotlight. That means fame and fortune don't go hand in hand with the athletes in these sports. For them, the years, the countless hours of training are born out of a love for the sport itself and a desire simply to be the best. Whether it's on a trap or skeet field or on a cross country trail, America's Olympic hopefuls are making great strides. Join us as we take a look at their quest for the gold. Biathlon is one of the most difficult of the Olympic events combining, as it does, two very opposite but equally demanding disciplines into one. And joining me to discuss this unique winter sport is Lyle Nelson, four times member of the U.S. Biathlon Olympic team and currently vice president of the United States Biathlon Association. Lyle, you shot in four of these Olympic events. If anybody can explain this to our viewers, you can. Grits, these competitors have to ski up to 12 miles as fast as they can on these demanding up and down trails and then arrive at the shooting range and instantly calm themselves down to shoot that small target 50 meters away. And you have to shoot fast and you have to shoot straight. Every miss results in a one minute penalty or in the shorter races, you have to actually ski a penalty loop. And it's almost like putting your dunce cap on and going out there and skiing that extra distance. And it's really costly because the competitors are so good, they all ski about the same speed. So it's very important to hit those targets. This is such a rigorous, demanding sport. Cross-country skiing burns calories faster than anything else. On the same day that you have to put out so much physically, you have to be at your best mentally, because shooting is just a mental skill sport. It's all about concentration and confidence. You have to believe you can hit them. Triathlon is such a unique sport, you know, it needs 50% of physical training and 50% of mental training. And if you're unstable in one thing, then you don't reach your goal. So you really have to have a balanced athlete. The mental, mental training has to come from the athlete itself. I mean, you can help the athlete skiing and technique and, and strength and, and physical training, but the mental preparation they have to do on their own. You know, I, I'm not really saying anything particular. I'm more just going over, over in my mind the procedure that I've done over and over in, in training. You know, it's just on my stomach, hook, you hook the sling, you know, hands in the position, aim at the target, shoot, take a breath, aim at the target, shoot, and it's just real precise and methodical. And I think if I think too much about it, then I lose my, then I lose my focus. It has to be more subconscious and comes just from the number of hours you put in the training. A lot of times there's people skiing around you and shooting right next to you, the people that you're racing against, and you have to maintain your focus on just what you're doing. Oh, this, this sport is a never-ending challenge. It's, uh, you can never perfect it. You know, every year you get a little better in skiing, you hit a few more targets, but it never is perfect. And so it's, it's the infinite challenge of this sport that keeps me going. It's the combination of the skiing and the shooting that I like the best. I never really was into just straight cross-country ski racing because, frankly, I don't think it's very fun. <laughs> but when you have the shooting aspect in there, it makes it so much more interesting and so much more enjoyable that I'm going to do it forever, probably. Wow, you've been shooting this biathlon event for a long, long time. I guess conditions for the athletes have changed a lot since you started. Chris, I've seen dramatic changes. 20 years ago, we were just a small group of athletes scattered across the U.S. We'd come together, train together. We really had no coaching. Uh, we, we weren't sure just how to go about winning international medals. And now I look at it, it's so much different. 
the emphasis on sports is much greater. There's greater help in terms of coaching, there's better financial support, there's better awareness in the United States of what these people are trying to do that makes them want to try even harder. When I look at the coaches that are here now, a gold medal winner from the Soviet Union, a bronze medal winner from Germany, I think the time has really come when the United States can move up close to the top in the sport of biathlon. When I was athlete, my goal was to reach results as much as I can. So the goal was to get the Olympic team and go for Olympic Games and win some medal. So now I'm coach and I have another goal. I have a goal coaching athletes who will go for Olympic Games and win a medal. It's, it's really been fun having Algis around. It's, uh, I was surprised how, how relaxed he is and as a coach. I, I, I expected much more of an authoritarian figure. And uh, he speaks with a, with a soft voice, but uh, with a lot of authority behind it. So, so we're having a great time and, and learning more all the time without, in a really positive environment. So yeah, it's been great. He brings in a whole new viewpoint on how to train. And he's been there. He's gotten a medal himself. He knows what to do. So you kind of respect him for that. You listen to everything he says, and I know we're going to do better. I just know it. Well, I know the training conditions are a lot better, but have the techniques changed? Oh, the skiing has changed radically. It used to be we skied mm -hmm. with our skis in the track, mm -hmm. going back and forth, and it was really simulated the running action. And the endurance athletes, the slight bodies, not a lot of muscle mass, really did well in the sport. It's changed a lot. Now you have these big muscled men and women, and they use this powerful skating technique. A lot of upper, upper body, just pole action, total compression on those poles, and they're constantly gliding forward all the time. And the skis are in a V action, much like a speed skater. And you see builds much like you see on speed skaters. I mean, big rear ends and thigh muscles. You have to have a lot of endurance and a lot of power to skate. These shooters are really wearing some high-tech clothes. Does that help your game? Well, the clothes they're wearing don't help them shoot at all. Well, those skin-tight Lycra suits are really made for skiing. And they're flexible, and of course, this is a real dynamic, powerful sport. But when you come in to shoot, they don't give any support at all for shooting, like a leather shooting jacket that someone might wear in the summer. They're actually quite slick when you try and put your elbow down on the side of your body. Uh, this is shooting in the worst conditions. The wind's blowing, the snow blows, your trembling fat fatigue, the heart's pounding, you're gasping for air. Uh, you don't get any support from your clothing at all. Well, I've seen a lot of rifles in my time, but I've never seen rifles like they're using out here. Well, these are real fancy, and they're made specifically for biathlon. They have a cover for the front sight, because you have to carry the rifle on your back. While you're skiing, it could be snowing and plugging up the front sight. The rear sight has a special made cover. But really, the big adaptation is the bolt mechanism. You'll notice when the athletes get down to shoot, they can operate the rifle and hardly change their body position at all. The bolt comes straight back and just flick it forward with their thumb again. Um, certainly a big advance from what I've seen 10, 15 years ago. Well, the best way to train for biathlon is being right outside at the range like you can see today with all the snow and just time and time drilling and practicing over and over everything you're going to do doing in the race the same situation there are times where we do have to pull inside and work on a laser and that's attachment to the barrel and we do all dry firing inside with our coach and on this laser it's a computerized system that shows on the screen they'll pick up all the movement that we do when we're shooting our breath movement trigger control if we jerk or if we're squeezing it smoothly so it's getting very fine and very detailed. And so it's a great thing because we can sit there with the coach and he can pick up more things that he probably can't see when we're actually outside in a race or doing the actual thing. Those lines are the uh, barrel movement of the athlete. And after the actual shot, you see a little dart on the screen like this. Wow, biathlon really is a great sport for young people. If somebody's interested, how could they get involved in it? Well, it is a great sport, Grits. The skiing brings on physical development, and the shooting requires so much mental skill, so it's a total development sport. Most of the young people come from the ski crowds, and they learn to ski at their turn centers and get coaching there. Then once they realize they're interested in biathlon, they really should write the United States Biathlon Association and get some information that shows them specifically how to shoot for biathlon. 
Before I started biathlon, I'd never even owned a rifle, never even touched a rifle for that matter. And I know now that it's gonna be something that'll be part of my life for the rest of my years. This is just so much fun. And I'm sure shooting recreationally is just as much fun. Right now I've only done it as competition. So I'll be a shooter for, for a long while, I think. You know, Lyle, biathlon is the only shooting game in the Winter Olympics, but there are more than a dozen in the Summer Games. And earlier this year, I had an opportunity to visit the Olympic Training Center at Colorado Springs to talk to many of their shooting athletes and coaches. Located at the U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs, the U.S. Olympic Shooting Center now provides hundreds of shooting athletes with world-class training facilities in one location. Lona Swigger, winner of 111 international shooting medals, including two Olympic gold medals, is the director of the U.S. shooting team. Well, this facility has uh, really made a great deal of difference in our training program. It's given us the opportunity for the first time to have uh, a facility where we can train year round. So it's an all weather facility. Mm -hmm. And this is something we haven't had in shooting before. Think it's made a difference? Um, I don't know that it's made a difference in our medal count at the international level yet, but uh, uh, it certainly will in the future. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a great complex. Just what ranges do you have here? Well, we can train for 11 of the 13 uh, Olympic events uh, in the uh, shooting center. That's the running target, uh, all the pistol events and all the rifle events. Mm -hmm. Of course, the only thing we can't train for in there are the shotgun events, and the shotgun events, of course, we shoot out at Fort Carson in our facility out there, the International Trap and International Ski. Well, let's take a look. There are two Olympic shotgun events, International Style Ski and Bunker Trap. Both games require not only intense concentration, but also lightning-fast reflexes and split-second timing. Former top international shotgun shooter, Lloyd Woodhouse, has been the U.S. national shotgun coach since 1985. Lloyd, this is a skeet field, but is this really skeet? Well, Ritz, it really is skeet. Uh, this is the version of skeet that is shot in the Olympic Games and shot internationally in all the countries of the world. Uh, it varies a little bit from uh, American skeet or modern skeet that most Americans are, are accustomed to seeing. It's a lot more difficult. Well, yes, it is. Uh, the targets fly a little bit faster, comparatively speaking. American skeet or modern skeet, they travel about 50 to 55 yards. And in international skeet, they travel out to 72 yards. So you can see the, the same trajectory oh. across the field gives us a lot faster target to travel 72 yards. And that delay after they call pull makes a difference. Yes, that along with having to have the gun buttstock touching the crest of the hip bone and not being able to move the gun until the target appears, uh, along with the three second time delay that you spoke about, uh, makes it a much more difficult game. So you're looking at between uh, three and four tenths of a second to actually mount the gun from the hip and, uh, and break the target. That's not much time. Not much time, <laughs> that's, that's true. Well, trap shooting in this country is probably the most popular clay target game, but uh, the bunker trap, Olympic trap, is a lot different. Well, yes, it is. Oli Olympic or international trap uh, has 15 machines, and it still has five shooting stations, but each shooting station has three machines at ground level that's dedicated to that particular shooting station. Uh, in addition, the right and left angles are doubled, uh, to 45 degrees opposed to 22 and a half degrees, and the distances are half again farther. Of course, they can use two shots, too. Well, that's true, but uh, the speed of the target is changing, whether it's a high target or a low target, and it's a much more difficult game. I started shooting in 1978, officially, my father was a bird hunter and I was interested in going out in the field and hunting with him. So he took me to the shotgun range to teach me a few basics. And that, that was my basic introduction. And in this game, Connie Fluker often shoots side by side with men. I look forward to competing against the men. It's, I've always competed against men ever since I first started shooting and I enjoy it. I think I can compete against the men any day. I've proven that 
in the past and on a good day I can pull it together and be right there with them. Well, when I was about seven years old, my dad started shooting American skeet. And I said, that's the thing I wanted to do. I said, come on, dad, please let me shoot. And he's like, no, 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 you're too small. You know, don't want my little girl shooting. By the time I was nine years old, he finally gave in and let me give it a try. I've been doing it ever since. In our country, I think we're, we're generations ahead of other countries uh, in allowing our women the respect and the, the publicity of being top competitors. And I think that's really great. These two young ladies that I have here now, uh, along with several of the other young ladies on the team, are uh, breaking new barriers for the future uh, young, young women of our country to, to shoot good scores. Without question, one of the most challenging of all the Olympic shooting events is the running target game. Here, competitors fire precision air rifles at a moving bullseye target. Lon Saunders from Billings, Montana, was our junior national champion in 1991 and is now one of our up-and-coming running target shooters on the international circuit. Lon, how good do you have to be to be competitive in this world class? The world class competitors shoot around a 580. The 580 is what it takes to be competitive in medal in world competition. And uh, out of 60 shots, that's, that's only 20 shots that aren't perfect. And as you can see here, these shots being close together, this shot here is a uh, minus two, it's an eight. Uh, maybe it's compared to three putting a green. A <clears throat> couple of eights and you're out of it. A lot more things have to come into play. We have our gun starting down at our hip and we have to raise our gun, which the rifle shooters don't have to. And we also have to rotate or be moving, whereas they're trying to be as still as possible and we have to be still and move at the same time. Mm -hmm. We have to shoot every 18 seconds. After we've picked up the gun and shot our shot, we have 18 seconds to shoot our next shot. Whereas rifle shooters get several minutes or actually a time to rest and put down the gun and concentrate. As one of the best rifle shooters in the world, Bob Foth knows all about the mental side of this game. What really sets Olympic shooting apart from some of the other sports is that it's a very, very mental sport. Uh, it places a very high emphasis on concentration and on your ability to focus on the target and on your performance. There's so many different things going on trying to, to pull your attention away. In the three-position rifle event, competitors must shoot from the prone, kneeling, and standing position. Lonnie Melly is one of America's top guns and has set three world and more than 100 national records. Lonnie, what a group. I can see in this game there isn't much room for error. When you're trying to hit a bullseye that's half the size of a dime at 50 meters, that's tough. Yeah, most people consider shooting an exact sport. Uh, a lot of people think of Olympic sports as exerting your body to the limit, but really shooting is exerting your mind to the limit. What does it take to be a top-notch international competitor? To be a world-class shooter, you have to be shooting virtually every shot a 10. Whenever that gun goes up, you've got to be confident that it's going to be a 10, otherwise you're not going to be on the winner's stand. And when you shoot a group of five shots, you need to be able to cover that by a dime. Well, I know that you shot in the Olympics in 1988 in Seoul, and you shot in a lot of matches around the World, World Cups, so you had a lot of pressure. But how do you cope with pressure like that? Well, it's, it's all in the concentration. I, when I'm practicing, I'm, I'm concentrating on exactly what I'm going to be doing in those matches. I visualize myself there. I visualize myself in Barcelona a hundred times. And I think about my shot. I want it the exact same shot after shot, which takes a lot of concentration. And I visualize myself winning the gold medal. So the, the more times you think about it, practice it, and believe it, the more likely it is to happen. Well, I'll tell you, this visualizing, uh, when you try to visualize a bullseye the size of a dime at 50 meters, that's amazing. Yes. Holding a handgun steady in one hand may be the ultimate challenge in shooting. Pistol events at the Olympics include sport, free, and air pistol matches, as well as a rapid fire event. Dan Yuga, three-time Romanian Olympic team pistol shooter, is now the U.S. pistol coach. Its shot is a 22 caliber pistol, semi-automatic from 25 meter distance. It's shot in five targets that uh, turn around together 
and the shooter is starting from a ready position with an arm at 45 degrees. When the targets, they turn around, the shooter has to raise their arm and then to shoot each one of the five targets. There are three different times to do this in eight seconds, six seconds, and four seconds. So the targets, they will face the shooter for this amount of time, and this is the amount of time that the shooter can use to, to discharge all five bullets. When you're up on the line in rapid fire and they say load, you've got a minute to call ready. And if you don't, that's, that's, your, you know, that's your points right there. So we're kind of restricted by that and kind of brings up the, the challenge a little bit more. It gets easier the longer you shoot. It definitely does because you get callous to, to competition. And no matter how good you are when you first start, it just takes a long time to callous to, to the competitive and that part of it and being on the line. The mental aspects of pistol shooting are 95% of the game. It's extraordinarily important that you be able to control your thought process while you're shooting. Um, if you allow intrusive thoughts, invariably it shows on the target. I think the mental aspects of shooting will end up being almost 100% of the difference between the people who medal and the people who don't. Uh, everyone's going in with fairly similar equipment, fairly similar you know, background and training, and it really comes down to to who has the mental edge on match day. It's, it's, it's mental, it's all mental. Uh, at the level that these young people are shooting, it's all mental. Uh, you have to shoot one target at a time. And if you can focus, be in the zone for that one target, one target, one target, then you're gonna come out a 200 straight winner and then shot fires. We'll be right back with a wrap up on shooting at the Olympics. So how did our shooting athletes perform at the 1992 Olympic Games? In the Summer Games in Barcelona, Bob Foth brought home a silver medal in the men's three-position rifle competition. And two-time Olympian Lana Melli captured the USA's first gold medal in history in the women's three-position rifle event, and in doing so set a new Olympic record. In the Winter Games in Albertville, France, U.S. biathletes didn't medal but there's clearly a new sense of confidence among these young athletes. I think this next Olympics will surprise some people. In, in the last one, uh, the expectations were high. We had new coaches from Europe, and, uh, and we really we put a lot of pressure on ourselves, and I think, as a result, didn't perform up to our potential. So we're going into this one a lot more relaxed with the idea to have fun, and, uh, and when you have fun, you always seem to do a little better. It takes time. But we have a goal, and we're trying to do this. I know we're going to do better. I just know it. You know, Grits, things have never looked better for biathlon in the United States. We have excellent coaching. We've attracted the kind of athletes who are willing to work hard. And we're going to climb the ladder, rung by rung, to the top of the international heap. And it really looks good for the summer games, too. When I was in Colorado Springs, I saw some young shooters who I know are going to make their mark in coming Olympics. Good to be with you, Lyle. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Shooting Sports America. The Shooting Sports America, brought to you by Remington Arms, Blunt Sporting Equipment Division, and Chevy Truck.